You have been graphing data since the third grade. The question is, what's the mathematics behind these graphs? And what do graphs tell you about the relationship between various pieces of data? In this lesson, you're going to learn about the graphical relationships and how, you, how those graphical relationships tell you something about the, the mathematical correlation between data that you've collected. With a subject like graphical relationships, you would automatically anticipate that it is, and it is created by graphing data. Now there are some things about graphical relationships that you need to be aware of. First, there are six different types of graphical relationships, and the details of those will be go on next. We never have any x values, so when you talk about these kinds of graphical relationships, you're talking about graphs that take place in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4, more often quadrant 1. You can combine graphical relationships to form more complex equations. For instance, let's say you graphed three different variables, each of them have an impact on some other variable. For example, you test masses against a force and you test distance against a force. All three, you know, a mass has an effect on a force and a distance has an effect on this particular force. If you multiply the two equations together, remembering that two, that the x values for each of the graphical relationships are different, you will get a final equation that talks about um, how each affects, each independent variable affects a dependent variables. Now, there are some subtle differences between graphical relationships that you need to be very aware of, and sometimes you'll have to go back and reevaluate and find get more data in order to be very, very careful about ensuring the right kind of relationship. And finally, slope is always important in determining a type of relationship and has a meaning in itself. And this particular subject is covered in a different video. As I said earlier, there are six different types of graphical relationships. The first set is linear, and those are direct and indirect. The second one is parabolic. There's the parabolic relationship that uh, is, so, is sort of wrapped around the y-axis, and then you have the root graphical relationship, which is wrapped around the x-axis. You have hyperbolic, you, and then you have three configurations of no relationship. Now, for all of the graphical relationships, with in in general the the exception of no relationship there is a general equation format associated with each you've been dealing with the linear relationships for quite some time probably as far back or before algebra 1 linear relationships of course are straight lines which means they have a constant slope this means when you go to graph these you're graphing variables where the exponent of each variable is the same. So you're going to graph x squared with on the x-axis and y squared on the y-axis, or cubed, so you'll have x cubed and y cubed. Direct relationship always has a positive slope, and indirect has a negative slope. And of course, with any linear relationship, you're looking at an equation that is y equals mx plus b. The second two types of relationships are parabolic. This means that there are curved lines, and for the first type, you have an increasing positive slope. This means the exponent of the y variable is smaller than the exponent of the x variable. So you're looking at, say, y equals x cubed or y squared equals 3x to the fourth. It will always curve around the y-axis, and it has the general form of y to the n equals x to the m plus c, some constant. The, the exponent of x is always larger than the exponent of y, 
and if you were to say take the ratio of the two exponents it's always going to be greater than one and as I said this is the definition of the parabolic graphical relationship the second type of parabolic relationship is one where you have a decreasing positive slope which means in this case the exponent of the x variable is actually smaller than the exponent of the y variable the shape looks like it's curving around the x-axis the general form of the equation is y to the n equals x to the m plus some constant again so we're looking at y to the third equals 4x squared plus 968 n is always going to be greater than m which means you're looking at a ratio of the two exponents are going to lie somewhere between 0 and 1 and the name of this type of relationship is a root relationship so you're looking at square roots which is x to the 0.5 cube root which would be x to the 0.33 or something of that nature the fifth type of relationship is the hyperbolic relationship again this is a curved line but the slope decreases towards 0 so 0 is sort of the asymptote for the slope the exponent of the variable when you when you see the equation from Microsoft Excel or something like that is going to be negative or if you look at the look at an equation you're going to look at the X being in the denominator of the equation so it has the form of Y equals M over X to the N or y equals m times x to the negative n. The sixth and last type of graphical relationship is really no relationship at all. You're really looking at a straight line or a set of, ver of points that really don't make a line at all. As you look at the relationships, you're going to look at a slope that is 0 or near 0. It's infinity. Now if you do have a slope that is close to infinity, you probably have got your dependent and independent variables reversed. Or, as I said, no slope at all because it is very, very difficult to determine a, a graphing line. For instance, if you look at this picture, you can see that there is a slope a, a sort of a horizontal line that has a slope of 0 0.0249. Now that in most cases are going to, going to look like there is a slope. However, if you look at the values of the x and y axes, you'll see that it is much, much smaller than the uncertainty of any of the data on, you'll also see that the coefficient of determination, r squared, is 0 0.4753, and any any time the r squared value is small, you're also going to be told, sort of given a hint that the there is really no relationship. A good relationship is one where the coefficient of determination is at or very close to one. So now let's look at, at an example of the period of a spring. So that is the time it takes for a spring to bounce from its highest point all the way to its lowest point and then back to the to its original location. The spring constant is really just a measure of how stiff the spring is. So really how much how long it's going to stretch. And we have a set of data that, that has been taken where we change the mass on the spring and then we, we've timed how long it takes for the period to occur. So when you graph the data, you get what could be considered a relatively straight line. However, when you take the, the equation of that line, you get a 0.53 slope, which is smaller is relatively small and you have a coefficient of determination which is 0.9765 now don't just assume that 
a coefficient of determination or r squared value of 0.9765 is good enough. Always take the time to go back and try a different um, trend line or graphical relationship. If the coefficient of determination isn't equal to 1, always take the time to try a different graphical relationship. And in this case, I changed it up. Um, I tried a different graphical relationship. And I came up with an equation of y equals 1.2566 x to the 0 0.5 and I got an R squared value equal exactly 1. This means that this data exactly fits that curve. So I'm looking at not a direct relationship, but actually a root relationship. Now let's bring it back to graphs and mathematics. From my previous example, I had a graphed equation of y equals 1.2566x to the minus 0 0.5. Well, it should be plus 0.5, but um, move, to move on. Now, the actual equation of the period of a mass on a spring is really t for period equals 2 pi times the square root of the mass divided by the spring constant. Remember the coefficient that I got from my graphed equation was 1.2566. Now if I take my equation and I remove the square root of k, 1 over the square root of k, because m is really my independent variable, and I plug in some of my numbers, I get 2 pi over the square root of 25, which is equal to 2 pi over 5. And I get an actual coefficient of 1.257, which is almost identical to the, co to the coefficient I got from the equation that was generated from the graph. OK, so now let's start the review. There are six different relationships. You have direct, which is a straight line and a graphing program will give you an equation with no exponents. The will always have a positive slope. In Microsoft Excel you're going to use a linear trend line which we will discuss a little bit later and the coefficient of determination is going to be close to 1. An indirect is going to be a straight line. Again, the equation will have no exponents or the exponents will be equal to 1 you're looking at a negative slope and the coefficient of determination is going to be again really close to 1. Parabolic is a curved line with a constantly increasing slope. So if you were to take a bunch of tangent lines, the slope of the tangent lines are going to get increasingly close to infinity. The exponent of the independent variable will always be greater than 1 when the, the equation is determined from the graph. and as usual, the r squared value will be close to 1. The second three relationships are root, which is a curved line with a positive decreasing slope. That means the exponent of the x value is going to be between 0 and 1. Hyperbolic, you have a curved line. However, it's a negative slope, and it is decreasing towards 0. The exponent of the x variable is always going to be less than 0, which means the equation basically is going to be negative. And then finally, no relationship, which means you're looking for a slope that is very close to 0 or very high, a very small coefficient of determination, and really neither of any types of Excel trend lines are going to give you a really good fit. A few final points just to give you some, some guidelines. Be careful, the shape doesn't necessarily tell you everything. You may need to go back and look and see if some of your data may be missing, so you may have to go back and, and collect more data. Equations are essential because it really does tie the science to the math. The R squared value or coefficient of determination tells you the accuracy of an Excel trend line and the closer it is it is to one, the better the, the relationship is. And 
slope actually has a meaning and you can't just assume that just because there's a non-zero number that there's a relationship. So watch your slope.